Yeah, hi, this is Peyton Hatch with KR. Today I'm going to show you how to, I guess, best practices of DWG and DXF attaching within Leica Captivate. And so I'm going to be using my simulator and then uh, AutoCAD as well. So within AutoCAD, this is just a, this is a 3D drawing. Our best here to show you what we what we got going on. Oh, so uh, some extents. And see, so we have 3D lines, and these are 3D polylines. These are not blocks. Um, that is one thing that is pretty critical. You cannot have blocks or um, like poly faces. Those do not work. They need to be 3D polylines or figure feature lines. One of the nice things about Leica Captivate is we can take the raw DWG. So from here, I could simply do a file save and give me the DWG, or I could do a file save as DXF. And it doesn't matter which version of the DXF you use. We can utilize the 2018 version. You can do a 2010, 2013. Um, it really doesn't matter within the Leica Captivate series. Uh, I do believe for, for, for to use the DWG, I think it's Captivate 4.0 and above. If you don't have that, you have to go to the DXFs. But say we've, we've had 4.0 out for a long time. We're now on 5.0 at the time of this video. So what I have done bring over this file. What we do is we do an attachment. I think that's the best method to get data into like a Captivate. So on an SD card, so I have a simulated SD card, you open up the data folder and you simply copy and paste the DWG or the DXF into the data folder of the SD card. So then in your project, you can click on the project itself. You can go to Job Properties. And you have all the tabs across the top, if you're familiar with these, like the general coordinate system. You go all the way to the far side for reference files, and we will add a reference file. And I can go down here, and I can pick that DBDWG. There it is right here, DWG. I would select it and press Store. Now, if you're having a hard time finding your files, you can go to your filter right here, and you can specify what you're searching for and only pull up the DWGs. So I have some subfolders here for individual projects, and I have just the, uh, the DWG I wanted. Now it's the only one showing up. So yeah, I can grab that. And I double check the units. It's US survey feet. And I can go through here and adjust my units. And I store that. Let this load up. OK, so now it is visible in this project. I can make it hidden, so it's still attached, but it's hidden, or make it visible. So I can import multiple DWGs or DXFs into this project. Um, and we'll go ahead and store the project. All right, now before I get too far, I'm going to show you some import settings. So you notice I attached it. I did not import the data. It, was, it, it is an attachment. So let's go check our import settings. So I clicked on the project, import, import DXF. And I don't actually want to import this. So I just want to check the settings. So I go Function Settings. And I want it to bring in vertices and lines. Or I can do lines only or just the vertices. So essentially, this, fi this prod file right here has been brought into the Captivate. And if I tell it to actually import, it'll generate vertices and lines and vertices at the endpoints and actually bring these lines in. And if I only wanted, say, only vertices, well, the line itself would just be there visible, but it would only create points at the ends of the lines. So you have s capabilities of what you actually want imported. And you can also attach like a leader um, be ahead of those points or a prefix in front of those points. So it'll bring in PT underscore and then one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, as I do my imports. So I was just double checking those settings. You do want to make sure you're set for US survey fee because it will default to meters upon your import. Um, so set it to U.S. survey fee or international fee, depending on where you are in the U.S. I'm going to go ahead and just press OK. I do not press OK again, because that will actually perform this import. So I'll simply hit the Home key, and I will go to my 3D viewer. And let's do a zoom extents. There is my project, exactly as it was here. I can go 3D. I can rotate the project around. You can see I have all of my lines in here, everything I want. 
you also have full layer control. So clicking here on the gear, I can go to my layer manager. And I can turn on and off the layers by simply hitting the state button. By making it visible, it's simply there as a visible reference. You cannot pick it. I can make it hidden, or I can make it select selectable. So it's, I can pick it and actually use the data. So let's go ahead and just go to the store button. All right, so let's say I want to work with this area right here. So simply because it's a reference, these lines are not showing up inside of my stake to a line or measure to a line, and I don't have points at the ends of the lines. But if I click on that line, see it bolds out, I can now hold my stylus down and go import. And it just imported two points. Just grab the two endpoints. I can grab this one right here, and I can go import. I'm holding my stylus down just over here, and it's importing those points. It's only bringing in points because I told it to do points only from right here, only at vertices. So now I'll switch it to vertices and lines, and I'll show you the difference it'll make. Back here to my 3D viewer. So now I'll grab this one right here. I'll hold my stylus down, and I'll go import. See, it brought in the points, and it brought in the line. So now this line shows up as a line that I can use. It's not a closed line. It has a perimeter. I can edit the line. I can rename the line. It doesn't have an area, obviously, because it's not a closed line. So that's how you start using the data. Um, and so, so you can start working with different areas, importing only what you want. It keeps your screen a lot more clean. Because if I would have done an import for this whole project, well, everything would have come in at once. So it would have been really, really messy. Now let's say I do not want to even worry about whatever this layer is right here. So I can select it, hold my stylus down, and I can say hide layers. Anything on that layer just disappeared. So I can grab one over here, hold my stylus down, and I can go hide layer. See, and it just slowly cleans up my, slowly cleans up my drawing. I find that easier to do that way versus going into my layer manager and trying to remember what layer it was so I know it was one of these because it's hidden. And um, say there's another hidden one. And I can simply turn them back on. Selectable, store. And now everything came back on. And, and you may run into a situation where you pre-calc all your points, but you still want the lines there as a reference. So at that point, what you do is you, you go into your, your layer manager. And I'm just going to make them all visible. So the quick way is just go function all. And it changes everything. So now they're all hidden. I do function all again. Now they're visible. I'll store that. So now simply, I can't, they're there. Everything's there as a visual marker. But I actually can't grab anything. So if you pre calc your points, you didn't want guys messing with anything, well, that's one way to do it. The other, that's it's also a really great way to, um, um, you can box delete things now. If you make stuff just visible and not selectable, I can do a box selection of an entire area. And I won't try and delete the attached DXF. And I can grab everything at once. And I can delete everything. So reference is still there. So you can bring everything back. But I deleted the imported data. So very, very useful features there. Um, that's kind of what I had, guys. Um, let me let me just do a quick import, and uh, let's just go function all, make them all selectable again. So I'm gonna zoom in on this one area again, just because it's easy. I'm gonna grab that line right there, import it. There we go. So that those lines, that point's been imported. So I'm gonna select this point right here, number 50. By clicking this button, it makes that 50 the center of my screen. It becomes my rotation point. I can now, with that selected, I can hold my stylus down, and I can go directly into staking the point, editing the point. I can do Kogo off of it. So just varying this and segmenting it. If I click on two, point, two lines, two points at the same time, I will have different Kogo. I can create lines between them and have inversing between the two points. So pretty much everything you need to do can be done right from the map screen within Leica Captivate. And you have full layer control, layer management of either a DXF or a DWG. 
and just um, you know make your lives a lot easier by keeping your drawings clean and doing attaching versus importing. I think you'll be better off for it. So that's all I had. And uh, please, if you have any questions at all, just um, make sure you leave them down in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.